Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin Thumma Alhamdulillahi Alladhi Hadana Lihada Wa ma kunna li nahtadiya lawla an hadana Allah Alhamdulillahi nahmadahu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruh Wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi wa nasta'nsiruhu wa nasta'hdihi Wa na'udhu billahi ta'ala min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'amalina Man yahdihillahu fahuwa al-muhtadi wa man yudlil falang tajida lahu waliyan murshida Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah Lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd Yuhyi wa yumit wa yumit wa yuhyi wa huwa hayyun la yamut Biyadihi al-khayr wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir Wa ashadu anna sayyidana wa nabiyyana wa qa'idana wa imamana muhammadan abdullahi wa rasuluh Arsuluhu allahu ta'ala rahmatan lil alameen Ala fatratin min al-rusul wa qillatin min al-ilm Fa'adda al-amana wa balagha al-risala wa nasaha al-umma فجزاه الله خير ما جزا نبيا عن أمته أوصيكم يا عباد الله وإياي بتقوى الله وتزودوا فإن خير زاد التقوى واتقون يا أولي الألباب يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون ويقول الله عز وجل ومن يتق الله يجعل له مخرجا ويرزقه من حيث لا يحتسب ويقول سبحانه وتعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون ويقول أيضا شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان أما بعد all praises are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him and we glorify Him on this blessed day of Jum'ah. In this sacred, blessed, great month of Ramadan. Subhanallah. We glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for His great blessings and to be alive in this month of Ramadan is surely a great blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Last week we witnessed a great event, uh, something that should continue to put joy and happiness in our hearts, the shahada of a sister who accepted Islam and this is something in the time of the Sahabas it would bring great joy to them I give you one example when Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab accepted Islam in Dar al-Arqam the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam says, قَدْ كَبَّرُوا أَحْلُ السَّمَاءِ عِنْدَمَا أَسْلَمَ عُمَرُ That the inhabitants of the heavens, the angels, they made takbir when Sayyidina Umar accepted Islam. And so one of the things we do when someone takes shahada, as we did last week, to recite takbirat. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides whom he wants and when someone is guided to Islam it is a great event the Prophet said if someone guide if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides someone to Islam through your efforts like you make da'wah to them you call them and they accept Islam by the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is better for you than the dunya and everything in it it's such a great occasion it's the difference between heaven and hell for that person when they accept Islam because Iman Billahi Ta'ala faith in Allah is the essential necessary prerequisite for Najat success in the hereafter without Iman Billah without faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no matter what the person does in the dunya in the akhirah there is nothing for them so I mention this also because these the, the, the past week has been a, a difficult emotional time for the Ummah uh, with what is happening in Palestine, specifically in Gaza. Uh, and it brings sadness to the heart when we see how our brothers, our sisters, our children are being treated and so I want to request each and every one of you to make much dua for Palestine and the Muslims of Palestine on this day and every day for the rest of this month of Ramadan make sincere dua let the tears flow from your eyes. Let's make dua for our Muslim brothers and sisters who are suffering. Uh, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them ease and grant them an opening from their difficulties and grant them victory. There are some things that you have control over in the sense that it's in front of you you can do this there are other things you may not be able to do you don't have control over i tell you every time someone can accept islam take shahada and come into the fold of islam we are strengthening our ummah and that is something we have control over how we reach out to people in this society our neighbors our co-workers our friends non-muslim friends bring them to the masjid tell them with islam now is is a good time because it's ramadan you're fasting they are intrigued by that that you can stay away from food and drink for 17 hours in the day from early in the morning 4 a.m. until late at night, 9 p.m. For many non-Muslims, they think it's impossible for them to do it. So use this opportunity to tell them this is the, the izzah, the strength, the inner strength that Islam gives us. When we have this, when we have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our lives, when you have iman in our hearts, we're able to do this. So let them know about Islam. It's if each one of you can tell your non-Muslim associates about Islam, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide many people to Islam. Many. Just do this da'wah. It's so amazing. This month of Ramadan, it's also a time for us to remember some of the great personalities of this ummah. I mentioned some before at the beginning of the month on the third day of Ramadan it's the howl of Sayyida Fatima to Zahra Sayyida to Nisa Alameen that we remember Sayyida Fatima the greatest of all believing women in all of creation Prophet Ali mentioned four of them that the greatest among the believing women, as Sayyidah Fatima the Zahra, is one of them. And then on the 10th day of 
Ramadan. Today is our 14th day. Sayyida Khadija al Kubra, the mother of Sayyida Fatima al Zahra. Imagine this for a moment. And this first wife of the Prophet, the closest friend of the Prophet, the one he loved so much that even after her passing, he continued to mention her in such great ways. And when you think that your deeds, your good deeds are in the mizanul hasanat of your parents, are your children good deeds, they are in your mizan. You get blessings of the good deeds of your children too. Think about Sayyida Khadija al Kubra, Sayyida Fatima al Zahra, and all her other children, the children of Sayyida Khadija. She gets that blessing. And then on the, the 15th day of this month of Ramadan, uh, it's the howl of uh, Imam Hassan, the son of a Sayyidah Fatima al-Zahra. Look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does. So many beautiful personalities of this ummah, Ramadan, they're connected to it. They're connected to Ramadan, either their birth or their passing. Sayyidah Nafisa al-Tahira, this great granddaughter of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam. 15th of Ramadan, and one of our great teachers, one of our sheikhs from the Ahlul Bayt of Mecca, Sheikh Muhammad Al Maliki, Hafiz Qadr Sirrahu, who he also passed away on the 15th of Ramadan a few years ago. Great people. And on the 17th of Ramadan, 17th of Ramadan is a great date for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the event which took place on this day. Ghazwatul Badr al-Qudbra. Yawm al-Furqan. Yawm al-Furqan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes it. Yawm al-Taqal Jama'an. An event that inspires us. Because even though Muslims were weak then, outnumbered, outgunned, to use that expression, they defeated the Quraysh, who had a three to one advantage in men and much better equipped with weapons and so on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave victory to the Muslims. It's a great occasion. Ghazwatul Badr. But I want to share with you something also, and that is on the same date, 17th of Ramadan, it's the Haul, the commemoration of a Sayyida Aisha. Bint Sadiq, radiallahu anhuma, Sayyida Aisha, the beloved wife of the Prophet, her passing on the 17th. After the passing of the Prophet, there's an incident that took place in Medina. One day, Sayyida Aisha is in her home and she hears much commotion outside. People of Medina. She comes out and the people, yes, they're excited. They're excited. And she asked them why. And they were looking into the distance at the outskirts of Medina. And there is a huge trading caravan coming to Medina. 700 camels loaded with supplies and valuables. So that is an occasion that grabs the attention of everyone. Medina, small place. Not too many people living there at that time. And this event happening. Everyone is there to welcome this trading caravan. 
Subhanallah. This is the incident after. Now I want to take you back to Mecca. Before the Hijra. There a few people who accepted Islam in the early moments of the Dao of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sayyidah Khadija, right to the head there. Sayyidina Imam Ali, Karramallahu Wajhahu, who is also connected to Ramadan, inshallah, we'll talk about that in another khutbah, in the other lectures in this month. Sayyidina Abu Bakr, a few people, and among the first eight people, persons who accepted Islam, is Sayyidina Abdul Rahman ibn Auf. Sayyidina Abdul Rahman, a great Sahaba. I want to tell you something about him today. Sayyidina Abdul Rahman, his name was Abdul Amr or Abul Amr. The Prophet Ali his Salat some changed his name. Change his name from Abdul Amr to Abdul Rahman. Yes, the Prophet Ali his Salat on many occasions changed the names of Sahabas, gave them Muslim names. Sayyidina Abu Hurairah is one example. When he came as a young boy from Yemen, his name was Abdul Shams. Abdul Shams. Prophet changed his name to Abdul Rahman. Became known as Abdul Rahman ibn Sakhrin al Dawsi al Yemeni. And then he became more popular known as the, the lockup that the Prophet gave to him, Abu Hurairah, the father of the kitten. He used to, he, he had a, 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 a big sleeve, that was his garment, his gown, big sleeve. He, he would, uh, when he was growing up, a young boy, he keep a kitten there, a small cat. Keep it there. So the Prophet said, father of the kitten, Abu Hurairah. Hirra means cat, Hurairah is the tasrir, the diminutive form of that kitten. So, Prophet changed his name to Abdul Rahman and his Ibn Auf. Then, he went through the persecution of Quraysh in Mecca. Because his Islam, he accepted before the Prophet Ali started his da'wah in Al-Arqam ibn Al-Arqam, the Bayt Al-Arqam or Dar Al-Arqam, which is the home of a Sahaba called Al-Arqam ibn Al-Arqam, who gave his home for da'wah even before then. Sayyidina Abdul Rahman had accepted Islam and the, the Quraysh punished him as they would do others, persecuted them. In Medina, the Prophet Ali mentioned ten individuals. Ten individuals, the names of ten Sahabas. He said, These Sahabas are going to Jannah. They're called Al Ashara, Al Mubashirina, Bil Jannah. Sayyidina Abdul Rahman ibn Auf is in that list. Subhanallah. Look, early days accepting Islam, going through the persecution of Quraysh, remaining firm in faith. Prophet Ali Islam told him, You're one of those. Imagine that. Imagine that the Prophet Ali Wasallam would tell you you're going to Jannah. This is the greatest victory you can gain. The greatest freedom is freedom from hellfire. You gain in, in Ramadan. This is it. Subhanallah. What does the what does the difficulties and trials and tribulations of the dunya mean for you if you know you're going to Jannah? Nothing, nothing can sway you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you know for sure you're going to Jannah. You will be willing to 
Be patient with all the difficulties of the dunya because there's a light at the end of the tunnel. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. If you're out of a job now, you're searching jobs, resumes, interviews, nothing is happening, you're, you're sad. You're making dua and so on, but you're sad because nothing is happening. But if you're out of a job now and you know you have a job offer, six months from now, you're starting a job that it's the best job you ever wanted. You're happy now. You're happy for the next six months. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. If you know that you're going to Jannah, then the difficulties of the dunya, they don't mean that much to you anymore. And the Prophet Ali says, the hadith, he says, if when, when the believers, when they leave this dunya, when they enter into Jannah, one moment in Jannah, one moment, one second in Jannah, will cause them to forget all the difficulties and hardships of the dunya. They'll forget it. When, when, you, when you go through difficulties, it affects you. It affects you. you. You think about it, you remember it. But when you get what you want, after that difficulty, you get what you want. You forget those difficulties. You forget those difficulties. Subhanallah. Ah, parent and children. Parent and children. Your, your child, your son, disobeying you, doing all kinds of wrong things, not praying, not listening to you and so on, not fasting. You, you're angry. You're angry with him. Right? But then he comes one day, he comes one day and says, Dad, Mom, I'm changing. I'm, I'm going to fast from today. I'm going to pray my salah from today. I'm going to stop all those bad things I'm doing. How do you feel at that moment? How do you feel? That happiness in, in your heart. You, you, you forget all the anger and hardship you were going through for the past few years with your, with your son or daughter. Because they now change. They want to do the right thing. Subhanallah. So, Sayyidina Abdul Rahman ibn Auf. The Prophet Ali told him in Medina. This is it. He went to Medina. Hijra from Mecca to Medina. The Prophet Ali salatu was salam. Akha bain al muhajirin wal ansar. He joined together in brotherhood, sisterhood, the Muhajireen from Mecca and the Ansar of Medina. So, Sayyidina Abdul Rahman bin Auf is joined to Sayyidina Sa'd ibn Rabia. Sa'd ibn Rabia, one of the wealthy people in Medina. So, Sa'd, Sayyidina Sa'd told Abdul Rahman, has nothing. I'm one of the wealthiest people in Medina. You're my brother now because the Prophet joined them. It's amazing what the Prophet Ali Salaam did. He he actually joined a specific family to a specific family, a specific Muhajir to a specific Ansar. They called names, you and you, you and you. He didn't just say, you know, be good to one another. Ansars help Muhajirin. He each one of the Muhajirin. He appointed them. This is your brother. This is your sister. This is your family. So Sayyidina Sa'ad said, I have, I'm, I'm wealthy. Take half of my wealth. Half of it. Imagine that. You look at your wealth. And you can say half of it. You give for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Sayyidina Sa'ad said, I have two wives. I'll divorce whichever one you want. Some of us may think it's impossible for us to do something like that. Share everything. Sayyidina Abdul Rahman said, I don't want any of it. Show me to the souk. Show me the marketplace. That's what he said. Sayyidina Abdul Rahman, he went and he started trading. He was good at this. He was good at this. Started trading. And 
every day he's making money buying and selling buying and selling doing business making money halal after a short time he got married he got married came to the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said ya rasulullah i got married now think about this if someone is close to you get married don't invite you it's like they murder someone for you you don't want to see them anymore why didn't you invite me to your family to your wedding it's a small thing Sayyidina Rahman a simple person got married the Prophet didn't get angry the Prophet said what did you give to her he said one nukhat of gold like a gold coin he already owned that one gold coin gift to his wife as mahar the prophet said must have a walima even with one sheep let's do it so they organize walima to announce the wedding announce the nikah sayyidam rahman he st- and then the prophet made dua for him the prophet made dua for him ya allah bless abdul rahman and bless his wealth bless his business the prophet ali sallam made dua for him subhanallah dua of the prophet ali his salatu wasalam sayyid abdul rahman said from that day anything he touched it's as if it would turn to gold he said every stone he turned pick up from the ground and turn it's as if he would find gold under it meaning that everything is blessed for him he's making a lot of money sayyidina abdul rahman in mecca hardly had anything coming from a poor family being punished by quraish and in the early days he accepted islam so difficult when you when you are in a struggle if you are at the beginning of that struggle it is difficult for you people who come after they it's a bit easier for them because you've cleared the path sayyidam rahman like this so now this commotion i mentioned in medina after the passing of the prophet ali his salam many things happen in between but this particular one because the sayyida aisha is reporting this commotion in medina she comes out wants to know what's happening everyone in medina excited they're pointing to the outskirts of medina they see the caravan coming the caravan enters medina they're counting the camels one two three four 800 camels loaded with supplies with valuables with food and so many things the people are happy they say this must be the caravan of Sayyidina Abdul Rahman ibn Auf that's what it is he he went into trading and whenever he would come back he would go to Sham Bilad Sham and do trading and come back and that's uh, that's how you would come back so every time he's coming back maybe once or twice a year that's it everyone in Medina so excited Sayyidina Abdul Rahman Ibn Auf Sayyidina Aisha said she heard the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam saying once Abdul Rahman bin Auf may creep slowly over the Sirat, the bridge that would take him into Jannah. This is at a time when the wealth is coming to him. So the Prophet wants to teach him a lesson, teach him something important. Yes, I made dua for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered that dua. This is what you're getting, but remember something. The sirat you pass over. And for different people, 
this bridge is different width. For some people, they would go over so quickly, they would hardly recognize the sirat. For the Anbiya, Mursaleen, Shuhada, Salihun. For the prophets and messengers, the great believers, they go over so quickly, they don't even notice the bridge. For others, this bridge is getting more narrow, more narrow. And for some, it would be like the edge of a sword, the sirat over hellfire. People would fall off from the sirat into hellfire. There's some, there's some who would be hanging on to this sirat, almost falling in. And then the salawat, the Darud Sharif, they recited in the dunya, will come to them and pick them up, put them back on the sirat and take them over. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Sayyidina Rahman. So Sayyidina Aisha said this. He heard, he came to her, he asked her, you heard this? She says, he, said, he said, you reminded me of what the Prophet told me. Subhanallah. He, because he heard it. And he said, bear witness, this entire caravan, this entire caravan, 800 camels, with everything on it, I give it away for the people of Medina. He gave it away for the people of Medina. Sayyidina Abdurrahman ibn Auf. Because with the Tabuk in the time of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, he came when the Prophet is doing fundraising among the Sahabas. You need a supporter, support the army, support the Ghazwat al Tabuk, the expedition to Tabuk. Sayyidina Abdul Rahman came, brought everything he owned. The Prophet said, What did you leave for your family? He said, I leave the blessings of Allah, the Messenger of Allah. Yeah, we'd give away and then work and get more. Get, give away the more he, because he understood this, the more you give, the more you get from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Sayyidina Abdul Rahman, after the passing of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, he would take care of the wives and families of the Prophet, the family of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Take care of them. Make sure they're well taken care of. He, would dedic he dedicated himself to serving them. Whenever they would travel anywhere, he would make sure he goes with them. Make sure they have the best camel, the best equipment to ride on the camel. He would use as well to take care of the Ahlul Bayt, the family of the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam. Out of his love for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Each one of the wives, he gave them out of his inheritance 40,000 gold coins. Gold coin. His own wives, the four wives he had. He, out of his inheritance, they got 80,000 gold coins. One dirham in that time was a gold coin. This is the wealth of Sayyidina Abdul Rahman ibn Auf. I tell you that today so you would know that sometimes you, we think that the Sahabas were all poor. They were wealthy ones among them. And they did great things for Islam. In this month of Ramadan, I, I want you to be mindful about this so that you can tell yourself, each one of you, let me do something to support Islam. Let me do something to strengthen Islam. Let me spend of what Allah has given me to support Islam. This is what you need to tell yourself. And Allah SWT elevates those who do that? We are talking today about Sayyidina Abdul Rahman ibn Affan. He lived 14 centuries ago because of what he did for Allah and for the Messenger of Allah. He will live on forever. His memory will live on forever. Sayyidina Abdul Rahman ibn Auf did all of that for Islam. Something that we should be mindful of. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and bless all the sahabas and bless the Ahlul Bayt and bless the awliya of this ummah and bless this ummah ajma'een and bless each and every one of us. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'iril muslimin fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafoor rahim. No matter 
what you have, remember it is a blessing from Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Hadith Qudsi, the Prophet said of this Hadith Qudsi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Yabna Adam, Yabna Adam. Oh, children of Adam, Unfik, Anfik Alik. That spend for me, I will spend on you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying this. Spend for Allah so that He would spend on you in return. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through the example of the Prophet alayhi salatu salam, He purifies our wealth. And every year for the believers, we need to purify our wealth. The annual purification of our wealth is zakat. Two and a half percent of our net income, what, whatever we own, our net assets. Uh, this is your annual purification. Two and a half percent every year, whatever you have. So you purify it. You purify it so there can be barakah in the 97 and a half percent that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you to keep. So for the believers, the minimum, every time you get something, make sure you give to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the cause of Allah, two and a half percent. Zakat purifies your wealth, purifies you and bless, blesses your wealth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُطَهِرُهُمْ وَتُزَكِّيهِمْ بِهَا So be mindful about this. I also want to tell you, Sadaqatul uh, Fitr is the special sadaqah for the fast of Ramadan. For its purification, it is $10 per person. If you haven't paid it as yet, go to the Sadaqat al Fitr box today before you leave and do that. There's one in the brother's side, one in the sister's side. There's a zakat form. You should collect it from the volunteers, inshallah, or it's on the table. Take your zakat form so you can go, go, go home and calculate your zakat. You can also go to the Islamic Forum website. There's a, an online zakat calculator. You just put in the figures. Uh, whatever you own, I will tell you the zakat that you have to uh, pay, inshallah. Uh, so we hope each one of you can do so. And the zakat boxes are in the brothers and sisters' side, inshallah. We also want to mention the special appeal we have made in this month of Ramadan that we kindly uh, request each and every one of you to contribute at least one share in the month of Ramadan, which is a share is a thousand dollars. The more shares you can give, the more the blessings are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and uh, do remember our continuing program in the month of Ramadan, uh, the nightly programs from Asir uh, to the Iftar program at Maghrib time to the uh, e Tarawi program, which starts at 10.30 p.m. every night. We'd like to see all of you, if possible, to come out tonight, 10.30, for the Tarawi program. After the tar Tarawi program concludes, uh, we have a half an hour break. Uh, and then we do tahajjud at about 12.45. After midnight, we start tahajjud, 12.45, 1 p.m., 1 a.m. for eight rakat of tahajjud. Uh, if you're able to, especially on weekends, you can use the opportunity, inshallah. We also have suhoor program on weekends. So quite a lot happening in Ramadan. For those who uh, work in the area, live in a far place, and they cannot come every night, we want to remind you of the Dhuhr program from Monday to Thursday. Monday to Thursday, the Dhuhr program in Ramadan, 120 uh, is uh, Adhan, 130 is Dikama. So if you're working, you don't have to eat lunch now, it's Ramadan. You can spend your lunch time in the masjid and pray Dhuhr, inshallah. I want to encourage you to spend as much time as you can in the masjid uh, in this month of Ramadan to get this purification, this month of training. We mentioned last week the purification from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, finally, please uh, visit the donation boxes before you leave today. Make your pledge now so you can start getting your blessings for the special Ramadan appeal and you whatever you want to start with today for that share you can visit the donation boxes before you leave. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless each and every one of you. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your dua in this month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you with health and strength so you can continue to fast all the days of Ramadan and do qiyam all the nights of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the greatest freedom in this month of Ramadan. Freedom from hellfire and bless us with 
Jannatul Firdaus Amin 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 Yaqul Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Fi Sha'nil Habib A'da A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim Inna Allah Wa Malaikatahu Yusalluna Ala Nabi Ya Ayyuhal Ladhina Amanu Sallu Alayhi Wa Sallimu Taslima Allahumma Salli Ala Sayyidina Muhammadin Wa Ala Ali Sayyidina Muhammadin Kama Salli Ta'ala Sayyidina Ibrahim Wa Ala Ali Sayyidina Ibrahim Inna Ka Hamidu Majid Allahumma Barik Ala Sayyidina Muhammadin Wa Ala Ali Sayyidina Muhammad Kama Barak Ta'ala Sayyidina Ibrahim Wa Ala Ali Sayyidina Ibrahim Fi Al-Alamin Inna Ka Hamidu Majid Wa Rada Allahumma An Sadatina Abi Bakr Wa Umar Wa Uthman Wa Ali Wa An Sahabati Ajma'in Wa An Tabi'in Wa Tabi'ihim Bi Ihsan Ila Yawm Din Rabbana Atina Fi Dunya Hasanata Wa Fi Al-Akhirati Hasanata Wa Qina Adhab Al-Nar Wa Dkhilna Al-Jannata Ma'a Al-Abrar Ya Aziz Ya Ghafar Ya Rabb Al-Alamin Inna Allah Ya'mur Bil-Adli Wa Al-Ihsan Wa Ita'i Dhi Al-Qurba Wa Yanha An Al-Fahshai Wa Al-Munkar Wa Al-Baghi Ya'idhukum La'allakum Tadhakkaroon Wa Aqim Al-Salata Inna Salata Tanha An Al-Fahshai Wa Al-Munkar Wa La Dhikru Allahi Akbar Wallahu Ya'alamu Ma Tasna'oon